everybody, Simon here, Bangkok Chronicles again, number don't know. Back to Chinatown, last time we talked about football shirts. Three quarters of the way up Yawarat Road on the right. I mentioned before there were some shops selling martial art knives and machetes and that sort of thing. But they also, as I found out, they sold lots of little knickknacks. One thing. I mean, you only have to find one product that's right that you sell on eBay that makes money, and you could be made. Jewelers loops. They're little magnifying glasses that folded out that the jewelers use to check the gold and diamonds, different magnifications, some with lights and things. And I've been asked about this from a friend of mine who's a gold dealer back in the UK, and I spotted them. But they range from 100 to 300 baht, which was a lot of money. Um, but I didn't know the market value, resale value for them. So the time I found them, I took some photos and got the prices. But at that moment, as so much of Chinatown, it's, you suddenly find these secret alleyways. And right in between these two shops that I was looking at was a very narrow alley. People who've got these little units make use of every square inch of footage to put products but I noticed oh, it was only two foot gap I walked through and I found a maze of very narrow walkways that was probably a hundred square meters covered in the little units a lot of the units were just like a cupboard like a wardrobe on the side a meter deep two meters long and the seller will be standing in that two foot gap so it was a nightmare to get through pen section we'll talk about that on another video all the pens but then the one what i call one dollar chinese watches japanese watches the plastic ones the they're just all for show they very basic battery quartz movement but there were hanging on a wire, they'd had all these watches, they'd have a hundred watches on one, literally thousands of watches hanging and on the display. And this alleyways went on and it was just full of these dollar watches, as I called them. Now it perked my interest because I'd never seen these, I've seen them on the streets for sale and they were selling for about a hundred baht on the streets. So it was just, back then was about one pound fifty, less than two dollars. But they were just everywhere in these alleyways. So many watches. And as I walked through, I sort of made notes. They were selling them between 10 and 20 baht each. So there was money there. But I couldn't work out if there was money there after you packaging, posting around the world. As you go through them, everyone's got slightly different watches. And I came out in a clearing. There was two shops on a dead end at the alleyway proper shops with thousands of watches in all displayed properly really nice and after going into that one of those shops made a contact there uh, these little shops they'd give you a plastic basket and you had to buy 10 watches minimum but the shop I went into you had to buy a hundred watches however they were all every watch in that shop 10 baht each so that was, it was pennies, it was about 20 pence, 25 cents, it was just ridiculous. I couldn't resist having a go at them. Um, and I bought 100 watches, the first visit, at 10 baht each. It was, just couldn't turn it down. <clears throat> so, good and bad. Back to the apartment, when I eventually got there, and I'm faced with a hundred watches, that's a hundred photos, a hundred listings, all the writing on eBay, a lot of work. Investigating, I could sell them for three, four pound each. And by the way, every watch you bought, they gave you a new battery that you had to put in yourself. <laughs> yeah, but I twigged. <laughs> I just send the, the uh, watch with the new battery 
and let the person put the battery in themselves good and bad gave me a bit of feedback not so good but pretty much it was it was accepted I listed these hundred watches and as you can imagine they're all various colors and styles I didn't know if the kids ones would sell the women's the men's but out of the hundred watches I think I sold about 30 and profited uh, about let's say two pounds a watch now I relisted the ones I didn't sell a couple of times maybe another 10 or so sold I started to realize that the certain type would sell the, the certain colors the ones with the flags the one with the football team names on and I quickly learned and I sold these watches once you'd listed them once you could easily set up to relist them without doing all the photos and everything um, and over maybe two or three months I'd always drop in there and buy another hundred watches but I was a bit more picky but I did find myself a few months down the line with boxes of these watches that hadn't sold the lady in the shop when I told her that I couldn't sell all this bought them all back off me at half price so I had hundreds to give me five baht each I hadn't used them so that was good that helped me otherwise I would have been stuck with <laughs> thousands of watches but is it worth selling these two pound profit a watch well if you sell 20 um, 10 watches in a day on eBay which a couple of clicks of the button it, back then that was a thousand baht now you do that every day for a month that's 30,000 baht work it out that adds up and that's just a couple of little items easy to parcel but the trips are, battery went as I said I don't know how many trips I was doing up and down to the post office things were getting crazy in those early days I was doing the handbags as I mentioned purses these watches football shirts now I did have a post office right next to my condo however I soon learned as I possibly mentioned before that customs around the world they see a stamp on a box Pratunam Bangkok it flagged up and a lot of boxes would be opened and checked and I was told also if I use the shipping agents do it at different post offices further away so that was becoming a challenge because I did lose a couple of parcels um, over the months which I was making enough money to cover it so it wasn't too much of a problem but it's not good when you lose a parcel the customer gets unhappy at the other end waiting so these little cheap watches even if you did it with things like earrings um, jewelry all this knickknacks and things if you sell enough of the product it adds up money was really coming in quite it, it, I was making a lot of money um, for a few months on all the stuff but I was spending so much time on eBay and parceling stuff up I didn't have a printer it was handwriting everything and a lot of supplies the station I was buying all these jiffy bags and boxes and things from Sam Peng as well in the stationery section which I haven't mentioned yet but I'll, we'll go on to that one but a lot of carrying stuff around <laughs> could have done with a pickup truck and a house somewhere and a huge big garage could have filled it easily so again in this section all these cheap watches in Chinatown brilliant amazing feeling in there and I soon learned which one was selling which and which was selling you pick it up really quick especially when you start having loads left up not selling my eBay costs were going through the roof all the selling fees but as long as I you keep on top of it and you pay it I was paying every day so I didn't have a bill at the end of the month um, which was good and I was using the PayPal to pay it so I never even touched the money for that so that was good at that point of finding that section of Chinatown that is where I discovered coming out of the other side into this one soy my favorite uh, part 
I think of all my Bangkok Chronicles and that was the proper replica watches now I will we'll do a whole video on the, the top end replica watches and what happened and everything and then my wife um, at the point I found these cheaper watches I'd been dating every Sunday uh, Mem, I'd been going up and down to Paramsam and the places and shortly thereafter is where she started coming up and spending time with me and that's where her invaluable um, knowledge of the Thai language uh, and the area really changed the gear on my uh, ways of selling and finding the products uh, having that language barrier, you can. I, I managed, and I was making really good money. I got lucky finding products, but they're all there. The products in Bangkok, every single one you want. But men made a difference when she came in. But that's a few more videos on, and the the watches. I want to do a, a video on a big video on that one. Back in pens. Now I did a video way back on Mont Blanc pens. I don't know if it's still listed. I, being a man, love gadgets and knickknacks, things, pens. I've been a Parker pen man. I found right in the beginning of those watch section, two or three stalls, like the cupboards, beautiful pens, loads. They just caught my eye and they were about 100 baht each. So I thought, that's quite expensive. I hadn't heard of the name Mont Blanc, didn't know anything about it. And there was other makes there as well and a lot of fountain pens with my naivety and not knowing a product i bought a maybe two or three of these mont blanc pens and i made a mistake instead of doing my research i put one on ebay for sale i thought 10 pounds is going to be the price for this pen and i listed it put it on it went up to 160 pounds now at that point all the alarm bells were ringing and I oh dear what have I done what's happened and I suddenly right start investigating online what is Mont Blanc and then I spent a lot of time learning about the brand and I just realized that I'd put a counterfeit pen of a famous brand on eBay it sold for 160 pound oh dear now, you, I could not afford to lose my eBay account with everything I was doing. Immediately got onto the buyer, told them what's happened, totally honest, explained everything to them, apologized for wasting their time. But they actually wanted the pen. They agreed to pay £10 for the pen as a counterfeit product um, and would leave me good feedback, which worked out fine. So I sent the pen, I made a little profit end of putting counterfeit pens on eBay but I got loads of messages from people who'd seen that advert asking about them so I could have easily bought loads and sold them but over the coming couple of years I bought loads of those Mont Blanc pens for myself because they're so nice and I've still got them great but that taught me do your research before you list things so easy to get bitten so pens I kept away from they even had the boxes with the pens that were all stamped correctly. They had certificates that all looked authentic. Everything looked original, absolutely perfect replica. Even the refills inside um, were all marked up properly. And since coming back to the UK, I even took one because it's the jewelers that normally sell these pens. They're so good. And I took one into a jewelers when I was having a batch a battery put on a watch and showed him and he looked it and checked it over and got an original that showed me wow so close he struggled to tell the difference but there was a serial number on the clip the the part that you put in your pocket that hangs over the edge on the side of the clip was a number and the couple of pens i had had the same serial number on that gave it away serial numbers watches pens Quite often they have got a serial number on and if they're counterfeit, they all have the same number. We'll check for that. But pens, loved them, couldn't sell them. Jewelers loops, 
I investigated and inside that section of the watch parts, the Chinese watches, I found more people selling them and the price went down the further you went in. And I eventually managed to negotiate 25 baht for the basic ones and 50 baht for the ones with lights for the diamond magnifying ones. Um, I bought some, shipped them to my friend in the UK who absolutely loved them, couldn't believe the prices because I'd sold them to him at just cost. He then asked me to ship lots to him so he could sell himself online and to friends. Um, and I shipped thousands I bought from this place. I put an order in, beginning of the week, for a whole box of 500 in a box, and I bought a couple of thousand off this shop and shipped them heavy. Went through a shipping agent at the end of my road by the condo, and 25 kilo boxes were, it, back then was at over 100 pounds. But by the time I'd shipped them all to him, um, he gave me 50 pence, 50 pence for every one profit after and the shipping costs and the put total profit but he was making two three four five pound an item that gave me the insight okay I can start shipping in bulk some items maybe if I can find the people to buy them off me who could sell back in the country but that was my first entrance into shipping in bulk using the guy that gave me the work permit 10 kilo boxes was the way to go. But I made a killing on these eye loops and he bought those, he sold them so quick. Every month I was probably selling them four 10 kilo boxes a month and making a lot of money. Um, that was great, brilliant. Just finding the right shipping agent, but you had to put all the shipping info uh, on the invoices, on the shipping paperwork and customs um, stopped a couple of the boxes and he got charged import duties but it wasn't much it was it was a, a small amount it was a couple of pence on each item but he was happy he was still making enough money and still gave me my 50p profit but that was you know it was something like 5,000 baht a box profit um, I was making 20,000 plus baht a month just from jewelers loops very good Anyway, that battery going, I don't know how long this video has gone on for. I've been rambling. <laughs> Have we learned anything today? Jewelers loops, Chinese watches, and pens. I'll um, see you on the next one. I must mention how I found a way of getting around Bangkok without using taxis and the BTS. Remind me on the next one. Bye for now.